Hi, shalom and God richly bless you. This is Apostle Diana bringing you um, greetings here from the United Kingdom. Please, how are you? I'm also good by God's special grace. Amen. Amen. How beautiful are they, the feet of they who go to spread the gospel. I believe the Lord has washed my feet to bring you his precious word this morning. It doesn't matter what is happening. It doesn't matter what you've heard. Jesus still sits on the throne and God has not abducted his throne. He's so God. Yes, he's so God for it is written from the rising of the sun unto the going down of the same. The Lord, name of the Lord shall be praised. He's so God. And he's so good. Can you say it with me? He's God and he's good. He's God and he's good. He says, these people have our form for myself to show forth my praise. Shall we worship the Lord? This one says, as the deer pants for the water. So my soul longs for him. Hallelujah. 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 Shall we worship? Shall we worship? Shall we sing to the Lord? As the deer pants for the water so my soul longs after thee. You alone at my heart desire and a love to worship you. You alone at my friend, my soul. Thing and I hear the spirit of the Lord saying, Someone is like the deer that is pounding for water, looking for solutions, looking for answers. Someone who dreamt this night a horrible dream, a nightmare, and is looking for solutions, looking for someone to give them interpretation of their dream. Like a deer pounding for the water, here I come with the water of the world. It is going to give you solutions. Whatever you pass through this night, whatever ensued this night, the answer is here for you. Hallelujah. 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 Jesus says, the disciples asked the Lord, who came to sow the thorn? Because they had sown. The parable says that the Lord has sown and the day after they pass by and see thorns growing. The disciples asked the Lord, who did this? And the Lord said, an enemy did this. When men slept, when men sleep, the enemy comes to soul. Comes. But the Bible says that he gives his, his, his beloved sleep. I don't know what happened this night in your sleep. I don't know what form that was sown in your sleep. But I've come as a servant of God to tell you that God, the, the God whose name is Jehovah Sabao, Today, now, is ordering his angels as we invoke his name, as we pray, to approve every evil tongue that the enemy came to sow in your dreams, through dreams, into your life, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As the dear pants for the water, so my soul longs after you. Are you able to see it well? This is my new book, Tabitha. Kumi, Tabitha, arise from the famous words of Peter in the book of from Peter in the book of Acts chapter 9 where Peter is called upon to go and bring back the death to life and as I say in this book I believe Peter remembered the words of Jesus when he was with that little girl and said 
Talika kumi kudagoli gozom kotokoli yamfampi. These words have to resound in the ears of every believer who believes in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. For we do not serve the God of the dead. Our God is not found in the tombs and in the graves. The power of our living God, the last time <coughs> I visited a family and the, the husband was telling me before they became saved, was telling me how people acquire evil powers by going to lie at the tomb, by going to sacrifice to the dead. But when Mary went to the tomb to perfume what is dead, to uh, embellish what is dead, an angel appears to her and say, why are you looking for the living among the dead? And I say to you, dear brother or sister, why are you looking for the living among the dead? Our God is alive. Our God is alive. And it doesn't matter what the enemy has come to sow tonight. It so, came to sow in your dream when you slept or through your Christian walk when you slept, when you backslided a little. I have come with this prophetic word. Talita Kumi. I've come with this prophetic word. Tabita arise. I've come with this prophetic word. Even as I speak the word of the Lord to you, let Jehovah Sabaoth. Let Jehovah Sabao, let Jehovah Sabao command his angels to give charge over rest, to approve, 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 approve every evil pun, approve every evil pun. Can, can you clap your hands and pray with me? Say, Lord, approve, Lord, approve, Lord, approve, approve in the name of Jesus, approve in the name of Jesus. I want us to read that scripture and pray. I'm bringing a word titled. Rebuilder of broken homes, restorer of ruined foundation. But I'm um, just late for us. I think it is in Matthew chapter 15. Break every chain. I'm looking for a song. And we're going to enter into a short spiritual warfare, even as the Spirit of the Lord is um, leading me to do. Lago di gozea bahala gandi. Atu alaba zegeri of speaking the Spirit with me. Ose golia gonti goriande. Mrosom folon koton konti kriande, abraban barian tondori abente, bria bente, tukulian pempe, corego de golian tori edede, bria bantu di bibriampe, o coro tu lovo di bada, aparante de dente, coleboron tono brumpro, calabra brante de dente. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. In the name, I'm looking for the song, so you just speak in the spirit with me. Logoriato, Logoriante, Adiriam Panton, Diriape, Coribriabante, Duriepe, Boriam Fancan, Turiente, Alabra Brampe Canto, Dalu Gabia Vento, Mentoriabande, Alabagarayante, Ibriabanton, Turiampe. Ore de de to le boda bate, caranga do le perianto, ala baranga da ya camberiante, renberiante periabe, crontologorian panto, arante de briabe. I said it, it is in Matthew chapter 13, verse 25. Rago de golia go de goriete, abragadia da la sugarabante, ambrondolie beria. It is said in Matthew. Chapter 13 from verse 24, Jesus presented another parable. Jesus presented another parable to them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field, but while everyone was asleep, his enemy came and sowed wheat among the wheat. Every human being sleep. Every human being sleep. Some are night sleepers, some are day sleepers, but every human being sleep. And at the time of sleep is the time of the human being's vulnerability. You don't sleep with your eyes open. When you sleep, your senses are gone. But if you are born of the spirit, when you sleep, your spirit is activated. And through your sleep, the Bible says in Job chapter 33, God speak to man one, twice. 
to reveal to them the pits that the enemy is laying for them. And if they find an angel, if they find a messenger to plead their cause, he will redeem them from their pit. So in the time of our vulnerability, even in the time of human vulnerability, God has still made provision for divine covering. Somebody say divine covering. Yet Jesus is saying here, that a parable is a divine truth. It is what happens in the realms of the spirit. Parables are not an answer. Parables are not stories only recounted just like that. They are spiritual truth. They are stories recounted with physical um, stories, physical uh, happenings used to as a vehicle to unveil a spiritual truth. Parables are symbolic of prophecies. Parables are symbolic of spiritual truth. So Jesus is giving to us a spiritual truth. That when we slept, the enemy, everyone has an enemy. Some people do as much as they can to please everyone to avoid people from not liking them. But some of us, because of the oil of God upon us, as they did to our master, so they do to us. We don't ask for enemies. Sometimes the enemies are provoked just because of what God is doing with or without us. So do not be deceived and think that you don't have an enemy because you like everyone. It doesn't mean everyone likes you. Because you're nice with everyone doesn't mean everyone is nice with you. The chains are going to be broken by the end of this segment. Whatever the enemy came to show in your sleep this night, by the superior blood of Jesus, by the eternal blood of Jesus, by the supremacy of his name that is above every name, every tongue will be uprooted. The Bible says in the book of Isaiah that tongues are not picked with hands. What he's trying to say is that what happens in the realms of the spirit must be answered by with spiritual key. Somebody say spiritual key. And Jesus says, behold, I hold the keys to death and life. And I give you that key. Jesus has given you and I that key. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Rego de goliando coriante. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, gather your friends around and come and taste of this oil of deliverance, the Tabitha Kumi oil of deliverance. Tabitha's name means a dare. Our song says, dear span for water. Dear span for water for two reasons. They pound for water when the enemy is persecuting them, and they pound for water when the weather is hot. I don't know what heat you are going to. I don't know what enemy is persecuting you. But the Peter Kumi says that we serve a God that knows how to protect his own from the pits that the enemy and the snares that the enemy lays for them. Tabitha arrived. This is my new book. You need to get it. I bet you. Calling the church back to the fullness of a mandate and action. It was published by the Evangelista Media, you can find it online on all online world publishing uh, stores. You can also order it from me with my autograph. Amen? Amen. Amen. This is Monday morning, Monday, I think the 16th, I believe. And it's, to, according to the world calendar, it's the first day of the week, the beginning of the week, according to Christians, um... Uh, Sunday is the first day of the week, according to Luke chapter 24. But for the world, Monday, the working day is the beginning. In the beginning, in the beginning, the Bible says in Psalm 11, if the foundation of the righteous is destroyed, what can they do? And the theme of today's segment, the second series of Tabitha arise, says rebuilder of broken homes and 
of destroyed foundation. If the foundation of the righteous is destroyed, what can he do? This is telling you and I that then the enemy aims to destroy the foundation of the righteous. And as we were, we were saying in Luke, sorry, Matthew chapter 30, Jesus gives us a mystery of some of the ways that the enemy uses to destroy the foundation of the righteous. If God is the restorer of broken homes and raises up people to be restorer of broken homes, then we have to understand that there is another that is a destroyer of homes. Because if a home is broken, someone came to destroy. We know from John 10 that the Bible says that the enemy is Satan. His only mission is to kill, steal, and destroy. But we have not been left without any weapon. We have not been left without any solution. The Bible says that God has given us keys to the kingdom. And the Bible says in Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 10, the Lord has given us authority to uproot, demolish, and to build. Someone say, uproot. 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 So Jesus says, when men slept, the enemy went to Sotas. When did he go to Sotas? It is not only when they, they slept, but when the person or the believer sowed their seed, sowing your seed is a time of foundation. So this parable is saying at the time of foundation, the enemy comes to do what? To come to sow. And I said that October is the time of foundation in the realms of the spirit. The Bible says in the book of Genesis that and the act, sorry, <coughs> sorry, and the act came to rest in the tenth month. The act that has gone through the waves and the billows and the storms of the sea, breakages, hurricane, kolazugarofeluyante, came to a standstill. Everything has a standstill. Everything has an end. But at the end, we are offered an opportunity to build up again. For those of you that suffered this hurricane, Horrible hurricanes. Yesterday I was watching the news and it said Hurricane Ophelia will be passing through the United Kingdom by the, but by the time it passes through the United Kingdom, its power has been paralyzed or diminished. And they showed its effect and years back when Ophelia, when the hurricane hit the United Kingdom, shores broken, houses uprooted, trees uprooted. The winds that came in the time of Noah came to destroy the wicked. Every wicked seed that has been planted in your life, in your children's life, in your husband's life, I command the waves and the storms and the flood of the Lord to carry them away. Carry them away. Flood of God, carry them away. Every evil seed that the enemy came to plant at our foundation, that the enemy has come to plant this night against our life, against our children, flood of God, carry it away. Carry it away. As the enemy has determined to destroy the foundation of the righteous, we invoke destruction upon the foundation of the wicked. Let there be destruction on every initiation. Every foundation, every initiation that the enemy has initiated in the womb of darkness, in the womb of wickedness against we and our house, let it be destroyed. Let the flood of the Lord destroy it. Let the hurricane of God destroy it. In the matchless name of Jesus, somebody say amen. And I also say amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Rebuild out of broken home. This is telling you and I that the enemy breaks homes. God built home. If you've ever been tempted to blame God for your broken marriage, your broken children, your broken life, your broken family, your broken situation, I've come as a servant of God to tell you that God is a rebuilder of broken homes. 
God rebuilds homes. He does not break homes. God rebuilds homes. God does not break homes. God builds home. God does not break home. The home or the family unit is a mystery. According to Ephesians chapter 5. And so if you desire to have a family and you're thinking that all you need to do is to get yourself a wife, have children, buy a house and start living a family life, you lie big time to yourself. Because the house, according to Ephesians chapter 5, is a spiritual unit. It is a mystery. The Hebrews understood this so much that they write in Psalms 127 that the, unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain that built it. This is the spiritual truth. It doesn't matter how you got married in church. You have laid the foundation. But if you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, according to 1 Corinthians chapter 11, he is the head of the house and he delegates the authority to the man, the man that is a believer. Many people miss this truth and think every man is the head of the house. That is not what the Bible tells us. It is not every man that is the head of the house. In 1 Corinthians chapter 7, Paul says when the man is an unbeliever, the woman becomes the head of the house. Just because the woman is the one that is connected with Christ, the head of the house. You know, the Bible tells us again in the Old Testament that in every house, the head can be Satan or the head can be God. Who is the God of your house? The fact that you went to have marriage ceremony in church doesn't end there. Baal can be the head of your house. God can be the head of your house. And Baal, Satan, when he is God of your house, as he is the God of destruction, he is the one that destroys home, not God. God builds home. Somebody say, Amen. So, Scripture is telling us in Matthew 13, Jesus says, When men slept, an enemy came and sowed wheat among the wheat and slept away. That enemy will not go scot-free. Whoever was sent in my life, in my children's life, you are praying after me, to sow wheat and think they can slip away, to sow trouble, to sow sickness, to sow pain, and they think they can slip away. They missed it big time. You missed it. Now, according to scripture, it is written, fight against them. You know, it's Psalm 35. Against they that fight against us, O oh Lord, lay hold of shield and buckler. And therefore we decree, Lord God of heaven, lay hold of shield and buckler and fight for our hell. Let your angels persecute whoever came to sow wheat in our dream, in our destiny, through our dreams. Whoever came to sow wheat, sickness, pain, destruction, whoever came to steal, to kill, destroy through our dreams in the realms of the spirit when we slept in the name of Jesus. Do not let them slip away. Let your angels persecute them. Let their path be dark and slippery and let the enemy, let you be an enemy to them. Let your angel persecute them. Find them in their homes. Find them in their graves. Find them in their tombs. Find them in their hiding places. Find them at behind their altar and slay them and slay them and slay them and slay them. Do not let them slip away free. Do not let them slip away free. Lord, even as you uproot the thorns, the wheat that they came to sow, as even as you uproot it, chase them and uproot them, destroy them, paralyze them, disgrace them, end them, silence them in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Let's see. So they will not slip away and go scot free. No, no. No, no, you don't come and so evil in my life and go scot free. You messed up yourself. Jesus says that when the wheat sprouted and bore grain, then the wheat, when the wheat sprouted and bore grain, then the wheat also appeared. This is a spiritual mystery. What Jesus is telling us is that at the foundation, the enemy comes to sow destruction. But sometimes the destruction does not take place at the day the thing was sold. 
So if you dreamt that somebody was giving you food, <coughs> whatever was given food has to do with sickness. Whatever that sickness was doesn't appear the next day. Some happen like that. I know a woman who came to show me a cat was grabbing her hands and in the morning she had scratches of the cat on her hands. That case is very different. This one came as a thief to steal, uh, to sow secretly. Of course, because he knows if he sow in the broad day like the believer will see and uproot it. It is the same with the story of uh, the people of Israel in Shushan. The Bible says that Haman searched day after day to look for a broken wall, a chance, a day that will fit for his case. And this is what wicked people do when they want to kiss a person. They search out iniquity. That means they look for a particular sickness that falls in that family. They look for a particular trouble that happens in that family. And they place their case and align it on that date. So when that happens, people will say, oh, in my family, this date, these things happen without knowing that it is an enemy that did them. But Jesus has found them out. Jesus has found them out. So Jesus says, the seed grew with the wheat and nobody was able to see it. Nobody except the disciples who saw that wheat are growing with the seed. Jesus said, when the wheat grew, the wheat also appeared. Have you, has it ever happened in your life? A moment of success and you're also seeing tragedy. The time that some of your children are marrying is the time that your marriage is breaking. Wheat and wheat. Wheat and wheat. It is not God. It is an enemy who sent out iniquity found the appropriate time that your blessing was going to sprout, came to sow their curses and appointed it to come up in your day of celebration. And Jesus is saying, but when they grew, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> God commanded his angels and they came to uproot we're dealing with how foundations are broken. And we're saying that sometimes it's a mystery. It is the enemy. He could have even sold it when you were being formed in your mother's womb. That you will be divorced at the age of this time. That you will die at the age of this time. They are seeds when the seed, because a child is a seed, sperm is a seed. When the seed was sown, the weed was sown. This is what the Spirit of the Lord was telling me this morning. He said some people that are suffering now, the cause began in the womb. For John chapter 9 verse 3 says, There was a man that was lamed in the womb when men slept. They sowed seed, but they slept. So I'm saying, you don't just get married. You don't just have children. You just don't go to church. You don't just come. You have a responsibility to be the guardian of your home. When we look at how the enemy destroys the home, because he, the, our scripture says rebuilder of home. And we say that if God rebuilds, it is not building. It means God built, someone damaged it, and God comes to do what? Rebuild. So we should look at how it was damaged and not leave a door for it to be damaged again. So when we go to Genesis chapter um. One, the Bible says that God builds the home by giving a wife to the husband. That is why the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 19, houses and inheritances are passed on, but a prudent wife is given by God. So if you want, I hear uh, this scripture being quoted many times by believers. He that finds the wife finds a good thing, so go and find. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 19, a prudent wife is given by God. You can find your own wife. But if you want a prudent wife, if you want a wife, a gift from God, go to God. Amen? Amen. God gives Adam a wife 
and he tells them to be fruitful and multiply. And at the beginning of their foundation, the enemy appears to sow wheat. And what was the wheat? Deception, lies. And the woman believes and a hedge is broken and the serpent strips them of their glory and of their power. In that case, he breaks the hole. So a broken home, the first significance of a broken home is a home that has lost their divine authority. Therefore, a home that is without divine authority, a home that is powerless to respond to the attacks of the devil, must be rebuilt. When we talk about building a home, we first look at the people that are in the unit, family unit. And our God is taking us to somewhere else. It is 30 minutes. I'll be leaving just now and then we will continue next week. God is saying a broken home is a home that has not God as the Lord of the house. The Hebrews call God Yahweh Bayi, the Lord of the house. And if you don't have him as a ruler over your house, then your house is a broken home. A broken home is a house without God's divine protection, without God as the Lord of the house. And how do we know if God is the Lord of your house? You know God is the Lord of your house by your communion with him. Do you have a family altar? You just got married or you've been married for long. Do you have prayers together as a family? Or you know God in church but not in the house. The first sign of a broken home is when we begin to believe and walk as people of the world. We believe in the lies of the devil. That is what happened. That is what broke the foundation of Adam and Eve. They disbelieved God by believing the devil. The devil came to them and gossiped about God. I don't know what, what, what you people do in your houses. Do you gossip about the church? Do you gossip about pastors? Do you gossip about what the, thing, the bad things that are happening in church? Do you even accuse God and put all the blame on him? You fall in your trap of breaking the hedge. Breaking the edge. Are you having struggles? Are you thinking that God is the one that is behind it? You are breaking the edge. Be careful of how you speak about God in your home. Be careful of how you are trying hard not to believe God, but believe the devil. Has the enemy come against your home? Saying, if God is with you, would he then be a allow this to happen that is what he does by breaking he comes to sow and you don't know it is thorns he's sowing you don't know it is curses those words that you are hearing if god is with you would he allow your husband to go and sleep with the other girl would he allow him to sleep with your daughter your son if god is in the house why are, you know the church has painted the believers home as a home without mark that is the gift of christ it is the cloth the white cloth of righteousness christ gives us it is not ours we don't have it we don't have it and so as we walk and understand that we are covered by christ's righteousness we identify ourselves with it and grab it and walk in it this is how the first home was broken god desires in this tenth month even as noah was offered an opportunity to Bring back, pick back the broken pieces after the plot. Noah did not blame God. Bible says immediately he came out of the ark. He respected God for preserving him and his family. Even though they had to live with the smell of goats and sheep and all animals of all kinds, all sounds of all kinds, Noah remembered. God kept them from the flood. He didn't destroy their family. 
He didn't destroy their life. Their houses were taken away. Their family, their mother, their father, because the Bible doesn't say the mother of Noah entered the first ark or the father of Noah entered the first. It doesn't say the sister. So there's Noah's sisters and brothers all were carried away. Noah's city was carried away. Noah came out of the ark with nothing. He had to start all again. You will start all again. You will start all again. Yes. God offers us over and over again chances to pick out our broken pieces and start all over again you will start all over again it is a month to start all over again it is a month to start rebuilding the broken hedges you will start all over again in the mighty name of jesus it doesn't matter how the enemy came to sow god is now giving us opportunity to do what to uproot and plant shall we see it jeremiah chapter one Jeremiah, no, I'm reading Isaiah first, then we'll go to Jeremiah chapter one. We will rebuild, we will rebuild, we will rebuild. Adam and Eve permitted the enemy to enter the home. In the realms of the spirit, mystics believe the serpent slept with Eve. So even as I'm speaking, maybe physically, someone has slept with your wife. This is one of the causes of broken homes. And uh, the last time I was with a family, a new family, a family that just began, uh, a, a couple that just began a family life, and I was give, sharing with them the mysteries of the home. How Adam was not confronted by Satan, but why Satan went to the wife, it is a spiritual mystery. Satan could have gone to Adam because Adam was still in the garden, whether he was going to work his only wealth was the garden and satan could have found him but he went to the woman the woman is symbolic of entrance the woman is symbolic of a dog in the realms of the spirit and that is why every woman and every man must be conscious of this and stop believing the lie that if my husband is not there i cannot do anything if your husband doesn't pray you don't pray the woman must be vigilant. If you read the book of Timothy, I think it is Timothy or Jude. He says, and the enemy came again and was able to deceive silly women and destroy homes. I am not a silly woman. Do you know I'm not a silly woman? Because I invest my time in learning the word of God. Listen to me. So it is not just the wedding bells, pay, 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 and then you go home and you go to church, you sing in the choir, you come home, your head is empty of the word of God. All you know is to look for prophets to pray for you, to adjust your situation for you. It doesn't work like that for we believers. Because the husband and the wife are both responsible of maintaining the sanctity of the home. The husband and the wife have been made watches. The Bible says, since I want to do unless the Lord watches the house. Now, Matthew 13 is telling us that when men slept, it means the husband slept, he was prayerless. The wife slept and said, my husband is the head, he will do it. And the enemy came. Now, if Eve had heard what God said, some theologians believe it is Adam who passed on the message to Eve since Eve had not been created when God was saying be fruitful and multiply. So the Bible says like the Christians in Berean, they had to search the word for themselves. So search the word for yourself. Some people are saying, Paul says that women should learn the word from their husbands. Adam learned, the, Eve learned the word from her husband and so missed it. She had to know her creator. Learn the word from her creator. Know the word of God. Because the enemy has one assignment. Destroy homes. And we know it from the book of Genesis. Immediately God established a home. He came to sow a seed. A seed of doubt. Speaking to the wife against God. Can you imagine if she told Eve lies about God. Then she would have told Eve lies about her husband. When your husband goes to work. That is the time that he that is paying the telephone for you, you take the telephone and start to insult him with your friends. You have allowed Satan, that friend, to enter the home. If you are a born again believer, I have a question for you. Are you a breaker of homes? Because God says we should break and build. You're breaking. Do you use it to break Christian homes? Do you break people's homes? 
Are you breaking people's marriages? Are you breaking people's children? Some children have advice from their mother's friends who advise them badly against their parents. And you are breaking home. Stop it. Stop it. Whatever you would advise the children must be to the respect of their parents. It doesn't matter how bad the parents are. You would find a source of good in them. Don't turn children against their parents. It is a curse in the book of Malachi. Which God says he, he at the time of the appearance of John the Baptist will be broken. So be a John the Baptist to families. That is what people do. You call yourself a believer. Unconsciously, you don't know that your actions is breaking somebody's home. Yes, it is. My home was nearly broken by an unconscious action of a church member. Unconscious action. She didn't know that her actions was breaking my home. And so maybe you wouldn't know that and many pastor's wife have plugged their things from the house because of the actions of a secretary. Because the pastor doesn't know how to say no to his members, but no to his family. Yet the family is the first. Home breakers. Stop it. Home breakers. Stop it. We have been called to build. Rebuilders of broken homes. Isaiah chapter 58 verse 12. That is our theme. Rebuilders of broken homes. Where is it? Isaiah chapter 58. I like the new translation version. He says, some of you will rebuild the deserted ruins of your cities. Then you will be known as a rebuilder of walls and restorer of homes. Rebuilder of walls. Do you know rebuilder of walls, what it means? The Bible says in Ecclesiastes chapter 10 verse I think three or seven. He said, he that breaks a wall, the serpent will bite. The question then in Genesis is that, who broke the hedge that the serpent was able to bite? Was it Adam who broke the hedge? And that is why God did not put the blame on the woman. Many people say the fault of the woman. Now look, read well, read very, very well. Genesis, God does not curse the woman. God didn't even curse Adam and Eve. He gave them the consequence of their actions. But the blame went to Adam according to Romans chapter 5. Through one man, sin came into the world. This is a mystery. Was it not Eve who opened the door to the enemy? Uh -huh. So why is God blaming Adam from Romans 5 that through one man, sin came into the world? It's a mystery. The family is a mystery. And it will be kept only by the head of the house. And it will be broken where there is not the head of the house. How did God um, restore the home? He restored the home by covering them with the blood. And that is why one of our duties as parents or head of the house is to continually offer blood sacrifice. That is the sacrifice of praise to the Lord every day. Offer a prayer for our house every day. Plead the blood for our house every day. Bible tells us again that the enemy comes to break homes through sexual abuse in the Bible. That is it. So you are not going through something that is so strange. It hasn't happened before. When these things happen in the church world, it is horrible because it's a curse. But people should not live with that cloud of darkness all their lives because they were raped by their fathers or mothers. It should not be a, 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 a dress that covers them. That it's like, hey, how can you marry her? Hey, how can you marry him? Hey, he slept with his mother. I, I intervened in the case where the boy was sleeping with his stepmother. And the woman then got delivered and she became born again. Do you mean that she, 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 will not, she will not marry again? People will not marry her? No, that is the church work. Hey, that, 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 that mark will remain on the woman until she dies in the church world. Yet when we preach about Noah, we don't find any shame in talking about Noah. But the Bible says that Noah uncovered his father. According to the Hebraic interpretation, it could be that Ham slept with his own mother. Or slept, abused his own father. Because to uncover, according to the book of Leviticus, means to have sex with. To uncover is the biblical word, which means to have sex with. 
So if you uncover your father, it could mean that you slept with your mother or you slept with your own father. The enemy came in again immediately at the foundation of Noah. When he had just come out of the ark, when God had given him fresh opportunity to start building his family all over again, he got drunk. I don't know, because in the realms of the spirit, the language of drunkenness means to be spiritually uh, paralyzed, to be prayerless, to fall into a backslide, falling back into sin, or believing in being deceived by the enemy. So no one could have been going through all these phases. Drunkenness also is symbolic of sorrow. I don't know what challenges. Maybe he went through depression. Because when he came back and saw how his house is gone, his mother is gone, his sisters are gone, it's a big challenge. And starting again, it's not easy. And that is why when people come out of challenges, they should find us as resources of hope. The Bible says that words break or build. And so our words can build people who have to start all over again, a new family who were divorced or lost their husband or wife and have to start all over again, who were abused by their parents, went to the social services and have now returned as a youth over 18 years because after 18 years, the social service will leave you to go back to start your own life. And these people, I remember some time at Brescia, the social services called me. This girl, they had taken away when she was, I think, 14 years old or something. At 18 years, they called me and said, we want, can you help the girl come back? And I said, you broke her home. You took her away from her parents. And I looked back in front of their parents. And what do you want me to do? But then I understood that it was the time. They have a time to let the person start all over again. And the girl had to start all over again. There are so many people who are finding ways to start all over again. Even now that I'm speaking, someone was raped yesterday night by her own pastor, her own brother, her own sister. It could be a man. It could be a woman. Men rape men. Women rape women. Men rape women, women rape men. And has gotten up and has a rope in her hands and she wants to hang herself out of shame. Like someone who told her mother, my father wanted to rape me and the mother said, yes, it's because of you. Because of your big breast and your big bottle. So now they are adding trampine to fire to the person who has already been uh, abused, psychologically abused and say, it is your fault. Isn't that what we've been telling people in churches? I once heard somebody preaching and said she doesn't wear um, short sleeves because it could provoke a pastor to have her done. Then I said, then the pastor should lock himself in the house. Because when he goes on the street, he will not find people with short sleeves. He will find people with bare breasts. And what is he going to do? Wear goggles? No. The Bible says each, each one of us should hold our body under control without blaming any other person. Hold your body under control. Hold your sexual organs, organs under control. Hold your mouth under control. Bible says in the book of Job, Job says, I make a covenant with my eyes not to look at any young girl. Make a covenant with your eyes not to look at people who come to check with, uh, uh, how do you call it, sleeveless. That is my opinion. You can take it or you can drop it. Rebuilder of homes. So we see in Genesis, Satan comes to destroy the home through words of deception. So I'm saying when somebody speaks, eh, eh, I remember some time a, a man of God said, you are very hot than your husband. I stopped working with that person. Because at that moment, he had sown, a, how do you call it, division between me and my husband. Because I'm not hot than my husband. Each of us have our call and our commission. What he does, I'm there to support what I do is there to support me. It's not a competition. It is what? A complete, a, a complementation. I stopped. I stopped having any communion with that person. Don't permit people to enter into your marriage, your mother, your father, your brothers, your sisters, your pastor. If they speak things that is causing confusion in your marriage, please keep them out of your home. This is what happened in the first two. And that is how it got broken. In the second home, we see that the Bible says drunkenness. Noah got drunk. The head of the house must all be awake. <laughs> when I was a young Christian, when they said we should pray for our pastors, I never understood them. I never liked to pray for them. I didn't like them. But it is when I grew that I understood that they are the covering. Therefore, at war, when the king falls, 
everyone will leave their position to come to surround the king. For the life of the king is the life of the people. That is what the Bible says in the book of Nehemiah. He is the breath of the people. Your husband is the breath of the house. Your mother and your father are the breath of the house. That is why the Bible says in the book of Ephesians, he says what? Children, obey your parents in the Lord. You see, the family is a spiritual unit and God has set orders on how the family can be kept so that a door will not be open for the enemy to enter to destroy. Because as I've told you, whether you like it or not, the enemy from the foundation of the world, from Genesis, had just one commission, to destroy the home. A destroyed home is a destroyed society. A destroyed home is a destroyed church. It doesn't matter how many people are packed in your church. How is their home? For their home reflects your church. This is the spiritual truth. That is how the home must be protected. Therefore, we read, we read in the book of Exodus. We read all through Genesis. God comes to protect Abraham. When the king of the land wanted to sleep with his wife, it was not about Sarah. It was about the promises that God had given to Abraham. The Bible says God made Adam the God of this world. Satan came and slept with his wife and Satan became the God of the world. In taking Adam's authority, he had to sleep with his wife. And so anytime you see in the Bible people looking for people's wives to sleep with, it is about the husband's authority as the head of the house. And so we see the king Abimelech looking to sleep with Sarah. I believe some people think he slept with Sarah. I believe he didn't sleep with him. Why? Because from the book of Esther, we understand that it will take time before a person is presented to go and sleep with the king. With Esther, it took one year. And by the time God started chastising Abimelech, Abimelech returned Sarah, and it was not even one year. So we see God protecting the house. This is one of the advantages when we have God as the head of a house. So men are so suspicious. Yeah, my God. They will follow their house. <clears throat> sorry, their wives to the market. They will not allow people to talk their wife in church. They will not allow people to do a ministry. I know when I, because I used to work in a bank, there are some people when they get married, the husband will let them stop because it says in the bank, people come there too much. Do you think you can protect your wife? All you can do is to, how do you call it, stalk. And when you do it too much, it becomes a crime. Stalking is a crime. God can stalk your wife for you and no police would catch him. God does not only stalk your wife, he protects them, preserves them from harm. God will preserve your husband. Why are you so much worried? Because your husband has so many friends. You know it's a problem. But you cannot change him and you cannot control him. Release him into the hands of God. God knows where he goes, according to Isaiah chapter 38. He knows where your husband sits, who cooks for him. And God can preserve him just for you. He didn't say amen. I say amen. Because I have a God that preserves my home. I have a covenant with a God that knows how to protect me. For the scripture declares in Psalm 127, unless the Lord builds the house. So in building the house, how do you build the house? You build the house by not allowing people to enter into your home to cause division by their mouth. Between you and your husband, you and your mother, you and your brothers. Unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain that built it. Unless the Lord watches over the city, the watchmen watch in vain. Hallelujah. Next week, we're going to continue. And I'm going to give you more secrets about restoring homes. But today, it has been my pleasure to show you that God built the enemy destroyed. Don't deceive yourself. That marriage is just looking for a wife, having children, going to church, coming home. You have a big responsibility according to the book of Ephesians chapter 5 and according to um, 1 Corinthians chapter 11. It is to stay as a watcher of your home. A watcher of your home is one that knows how to keep awake in prayer with the word. Having a prayer altar at home, keeping the family churchy. Giving your wife the word, giving your husband the word, feeding your children with the word of God, creating an atmosphere of God in your home. Making God the Lord of your home is as simple as this. So when we read the story of the Passover about God's deliverance for the people of Israel, it does not begin with a whole nation. 
it begins with the home. And God says that the angel of death is going to walk through the city, but a house that is covered with the blood will be kept from the angel of death. So we see again that God builds home with what? The blood. God's deliverance to Israel came through every single home. And according to God's command, he said, every single house must slay a lamb. This means that every house has its own mensa. The problem in my house is not the problem in your house. That is why I must learn to think about my house and how to solve my problem than trying to enter people's houses and trying to... You know, there are some people... I, I remember when I was a social worker, there was a man that had thrown her wife away from the house. And one day we were at the social service when he came with somebody's wife that has been thrown out to look for help. And the social worker said, what kind of strange thing is this? You just threw your wife from the house and now you are holding somebody's wife's hand to come to look for help. That is what some people do. Only one fear them. They are not able to finish dealing with their house problem. They will start to deal with other people's house problem. I'm telling you, the house is a mystery. The unit of the family is a mystery. And you can't keep it long. You can't keep it good as God wants. Somebody will say, what about our mothers and our fathers? I can't talk about how they kept their marriages if they are not believers. I can talk about only the Christian home because that is my responsibility. And according to scripture, if your house has no, not the Lord as the Lord of the house, then your house is open. The walls are broken. We are talking about restorer of homes and of broken foundation. It means the foundation of your marriage is broken. The foundation of your life is broken. The foundation of your success is broken. It does not hold. It can break any time. But if you have the law, so I'm saying a broken home is not only when a house um, is divided. Uh, a broken home is not um, a house, uh, a, a, how, do, how do we call it? A disabled families. Uh, dysfunctional, yes, dysfunctional family. A broken, a sign of a broken home is a house without God. A house that, with their mouth, present themselves as Christians but have no relationship with God at home. That is the first sign of a broken home. The second sign of a broken home is when you allow all voices to enter into your home to determine how your house should be built. Christians have a manual. I hear people say that marriage is the only um, institution that does not have, have a manual. The Bible has a manual. The Bible has a manual for marriage. And we will go, we will go, we will see it, or you can see it for yourself. Go to Ephesians chapter 5. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Go to the book of Proverbs. The Bible has a manual for the house. Psalm 144. It's a scripture I like very much, but I'm concluding with my two scriptures. Then I will let you go. Amen. Some of you will rebuild the deserted ruins of your cities. When I was looking at this, God said, in every family, at least one person is made by God as a rebuilder of ruined cities. You will be known as a rebuilder of walls and restorer of homes. Restorer of homes. This is what the Spirit of God was telling me. He was telling me that some of some people come from broken homes and they live all their destiny according to the pattern of a broken home. So uh, the last time a youth was telling me, okay, this guy's mother was a, a gangster and gave birth to him in the prison and he grew out to be a gangster. Can you blame him? And I said, no, I can't. One of the things I've learned across my 51 years is never to think or to have even the audacity to blame people. But what I know is that time and time again, if this guy is a believer, then God presents as opportunity, like I'm presenting to you today, to pick up the old pieces and write. Do you know how many times I've been broken? But God gave me the opportunity I have been raped in ministry. I have been raped psychologically. Do you know there is ministerial rape? A woman came from America and raped me in the ministry. <clears throat> and I didn't know it was rape, ministerial rape. And whilst I was mourning over what ha ha happened, the Spirit of God said, I asked you to look through her biography and you didn't listen to me because she is a rapist. And I said, a rapist. 
Do we have people who rape people in ministry? And the Holy Ghost said, yes. Actually, before I ordain a person, I take their biography. But I didn't read this woman's biography. Maybe I don't know what happened. And in her biography that she sent to me, she wrote that she's a child of rape. So she unconsciously or consciously was a child of rape. And so she was activating rape everywhere she goes, raping people, deceiving people and taking from them. And she didn't know. She is a child of rape. I didn't read the biography. I didn't do anything about it. She came to rape me in ministry and left. And the Bible says when men slept, that is what we read. The enemy came to sow and slipped away. But today I say, whoever came to sow wheat can never sleep. They will not sleep away again. Enough with the abuse. Enough with the hurt. Enough with the pain. Rape in ministry. Pastors who rape choristers and gospel artists. And you want them to keep quiet. And people enter into marriage already broken. So the foundation of their marriage is already broken. Because a pastor was not faithful to them. A leader was not faithful to them, to them. Their own brother. A woman told me how his own son would enter into her house, her room, and say, Mama, I want to sleep with you. And the woman was a pastor, and she was shocked. And I said, then why should you be shocked? It happened to no one. It is the enemy who looks to so seeds to destroy destiny. But God says some of you and I are repairers of destiny. I believe Mo, um, Joseph was a repairer of uh, broken walls because he, ca he came from a broken wall. Oh. His father Jacob was a broken man. Every poly I come from a polygamous home. Every polygamous home is a broken home. And God offered Israel the foundation to rebuild again by taking Josh. Joseph, through mentorship in life, to restore Israel as the nation. So maybe some of you, the ones we call the black sheep in the family, I sincerely believe many times they are the restorer of broken, <coughs> sorry, homes. And that is why the enemy's eye is always on them. Do you want to be a restorer of your broken home, your broken family, your broken street? I want to be a restorer. I don't want to accept what life has presented to me that this is the family you come from. I don't think you have to accept that because you come from a family of drunkards. That should be your destiny. You know, life spirits attract. If you were raped and you are not careful, you would be attracted to a man that rapes. These are spirits. These are mysteries because life spirits attract. You just don't have to sit down and allow life to pass by you as if you alone is carrying the whole trouble of the world. Every, don't be deceived. Everybody is going through something, but not everyone says it. Your own is not the end of the world. There was a time that I had gone through shame so much that I said, what else is there for me to learn? It is better to take my life. That it was at the foundation that was the time that God had a good plan to raise me up to my next level. And at the foundation, the enemy came to lie and said, nothing good will come out of you. Lie, lie. I never knew, but God knew. I am telling you something good will come out of you. I am telling you, you are the one to rebuild your broken home. I am telling you, you are anointed to do that. Isaiah chapter 61. Isaiah chapter 61. Just stay with me and I'm closing. Isaiah 61. I... I have lots of scriptures on my computer, on my telephone, so I'm finding it difficult. He says, they shall rebuild old ways but i'll post it i'll post it on the uh, on the segment in hebrews 3 4 he says every house is built by god but he that built all things is called is god the builder of your family i'm reading another scripture where is it 
Oh. Proverbs 14 1 says, A wise woman built her house, but the foolish tears it down with her own hands. I'm talking some scriptures about building, building the whole. In Isaiah chapter 61, verse 4, it is written, They shall build up the ancient ruins. I'm still talking about ancient ruins. Ancient rules are this morning the Lord gave me a revelation. He says that ancient rules, like we saw in Matthew chapter 13, some people they are they are they are paralyzed already from the womb, and it does not manifest until maybe 18 years, 20 years, 16 years, 30 years. It begins by the time we close. That is the prayer we are going to do. That whatever seed or weed was sown at your foundation. When you are in your mother's womb, when that is why when you are, get married, you get pregnant. This is a generation that should be aware and not go through our mistakes. When you are pregnant, you should eat the lost supper to preserve your children's life. The child in the womb is not preserved only by serilac and you eating plantain and green leaves. The children in your womb goes through things your eyes don't see. You pass on him or her, your DNA, the mitochondria, your blood, your water, everything is that is in you passes on to the child. And there are so many things that is in you that is not good. According to scripture, the blood of humans is poisoned. But there is something that can sanctify your blood when your children are in your womb. It is the blood of Jesus. A pregnant woman must be taking the Holy Eucharist at least once a week. If you can't take it every day, take it once a week. And when you give birth to your child, whilst you are breastfeeding them, you have to eat the Lord's Supper. So that even your breast milk, which passes, I have a book, I think it is called uh, Psycho Genealogy and Numa Genealogy. And I talk about how life is passed on to another through breastfeeding. Through even when we are pregnant with them, the words that we say. So we break life already when the life is in the womb. I had a deliverance service and at a point, the Lord told me that the guy was given over to Satan because when the mother was pregnant with her, the mother said she is not ready for this pregnancy. But she kept it. Ah, I'm pregnant again. I don't want it. Immediately the mother said, I don't want it. A demon take over, took over the child and bound the child with a psychiatric disorder. It took deliverance, not doctors. So even at the time of our pregnancy, we should be careful about the word we say with our mouth and preserve the life that God has given us. Preserve life. We are being called preservers of life, not destroyers of life. I myself have my own experience with corporal punishment. My mother was a teacher. And so shipping became common with me in Akikedro, ginger. They will put ginger in, the, in our private part, our female private part. And many Africans uphold this kind of tradition. Listen to me. It does more harm than good, I'm telling you. The Bible, I think, I think when I was saying that the woman said the Bible says the rod uh, discipline a child so that when it's I said the Bible also says the rod is for the back of the fool. And children are not fools, children are only eat children. And the rod is for the back of a horse. I disagree with corporal punishment. In fact, the Bible says, do not chastise your children in anger. Many of us we ship our children when we are angry. We don't ship them laughing. We ship them in anger. The Bible forbids it. Stop covering the, the, your errors with the Bible. My daughter, one of my daughters has a program. He says, speak out. I will say, say it loud. Say it loud. I disagree to corporal punishment. Moreover, I disagree when you ship your children in anger. Bible does not support you. When I was a social worker, a man came to court because the social service has taken a daughter who went to report to the social center that the father kept her with a belt. And the belt was all over the body of the child. And the man who came to court, ah, should I do the interpretation for you? Are you joking? Telling the, the, the judge, the Bible says we should shape our children. Are you not ashamed to say that? 
So the Bible told you to shape the child so that marks will come on the face of the child. That breaking, broken. Children are broken through shaping. Don't you know? A research said that majority of children that end in prison are children that were abused either by corporal punishment, by verbal punishment, by verbal abuse, corporal punishment, sexual abuse. It's not only sexual abuse. Some of us are not sleeping with our children, but we are abusing us with their mouth. I remember I tried to correct a woman. She looked me up and down as if I'm joking. And you know how she was abusing the child? The second born is very smart than the first born. Smart intellectually. But the first born is very wise. Yes, he's not good with mathematics, but he is very meticulous. And any time I'll visit them, the mother will say, Wah, she, she, she. Wah, maunia, kitwa, ji, uh, look at him, John, John, John. Your, your, your second brother, your junior brother has taken your, your eldership. Oh, so unconsciously, the mother was telling the child that he is junior to the junior. Unconsciously, when we bring preferences, that is how Joseph was sold. Because his father brought preferences. And they said, ah, our father liked you than us. Then we will kill you. If you are a parent, learn lessons from uh, Jacob's story. And don't fall into this trap. I don't create preferences for any of my children. One can finish university, one cannot finish university, or will finish university. It is not the big deal. Every one of them is a gift from God, and every one of them have a talent from God, and every one of them have a mission from God, which I have to support in fulfilling. They may not choose what maybe I want them to do, but because of prayer, I know they are carefully guided by God, and they would arrive to their safe heaven. Somebody say amen. And so this is how sometimes parents abuse their children. So abuse is not only sexual abuse. Corporal punishment, I disagree. You can write to me your opinion. The Bible says the Lord. So if you have started a family, don't start to pull bells on your two-year, three-year, four-year-old daughter. They are having enough challenges in this world. They are having enough challenges already living in that one-room house you have provided for them. They are having enough shame to go to school without a source. Do not have trampine to fire. Children have been given to you as a gift for you to preserve, to protect, to nurture. And in all our failures, like I said, I had failed. And I didn't know. I thought I was doing my Christian duty until I started working with the social services. And anytime we treated an abusive family, I couldn't stay in there in the, uh, 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 we call it a quake, I would burst out crying because I recognized that that was what I was doing to my children. Shipping them, thinking that that is what I, I was not helping them because I was shipping them in anger. And I was not helping them. Thank God for his grace and mercy. He's a rebuilder of homes that has rebuilt my home and keeps on rebuilding my home and he will rebuild your home and he will keep on rebuilding your home it is one hour 13 minutes and so i have to close and then we will come back next week with isaiah 54 as isaiah 58 verse 12 and isaiah 61 4. they shall build up ancient ruins they shall raise up formal devastation they shall repair real cities so stop making excuses <coughs> it doesn't matter how your home has been broken it doesn't matter how your life was broken through the family this functional family you came from i came from a dysfunctional family and even though i was a christian my home was dysfunctional because i was bringing my children up in the wrong way thinking shipping them in anger was doing good. It was doing harm. They already lived in a society having challenges and I was adding my own to it. It doesn't matter what broken home you have come from. Your life can be rebuilt. And you would also become a rebuilder of broken homes. First, by joining the hedge. He says, he that breaks the hedge, a serpent will bite. 
you can join the hedge by pleading the blood of Jesus on your life, invoking the blood of Jesus to give you opportunity to live again. We conclude in with Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 10. Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 10. Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 10. God is a father to the fatherless. That is, I am reading Psalm 68, verse 5. God is a father to the fatherless. A broken home is usually defined as also a home without a husband, or a home without a father, or a woman without a husband, a woman without even children is termed as a broken home. But God is a rebuilder of broken homes. He's a father to the fatherless and a husband to the widow. Jeremiah chapter 1. You and have have a duty to preserve our home from the onslaught of the enemy. The disciples of Jesus asked him, who did this? And he didn't say it is your mother, your father. He didn't say it is your uncle. Somebody asked me, so if my father does that, should I hand over him over to the law? And I say it depends on every case. There are cases where the person should be handed over to the law. And there are cases that God gives direction. And so if you look at all these cases of abuse in the Bible, God always gave direction. God always gave direction. What I know is that you must not uncover your mother. You must not uncover your father. Uncovering means you must not disgrace them publicly. But if they are abusers, then you have to talk to someone. Talk to, pray to God and let him lead you because it's not everyone you will talk to that will be a help to you. If your mother is abusing you, your father is abusing you, your pastor is abusing you, someone is abusing you. Psychology, some people don't even know they are being abused. That is the problem. I didn't know I was being abused. What the situation I was going through was abuse. I didn't know. A man told me they nearly took her daughter away because the wife, the night before, put a keke drew a ginger in her private part. And when the child went to school, she would be doing like that. So the teachers got to know something had gone wrong. I know of a Ghanaian woman who just was feeding his son. I think it is a two-year-old son, just as we do in Ghana. You know, um, you force the food and press the food in the child's mouth. She was doing what her mothers were doing. She was doing what she saw being done in her culture. As she did that, the child was suffocated and died. They put the woman in prison. So it's not everything we do that we must always do. We must use our sense and ask God for direction. So putting ginger in your daughter's private part, I am asking you. Some parents don't even put the ginger in the private part. They will intimidate the children with a and then the child will run away it's like you are jo joking it's not good stop it look for means to discipline your child because the bible says an undisciplined child will bring disgrace to the parent so the bible says god himself disciplines you and i and so the bible are certain and condones child discipline what you have to do is to look for the right form of discipline because Wrong form of discipline causes a broken home. God says in Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 10, See, <coughs> I have this day set you over nations <coughs> and over kingdoms, sorry, to root out, to pull down, to destroy, to throw down, to build, and to plant and i know that what i'm saying is very difficult i remember at one time at my deliverance service a woman came the spirit of god said there is a woman here whose sister's brother is sleeping with her and nobody came and i still prayed and later somebody came to look for me in the house and said i was the woman you were talking about and i said in the house what can i do at that place there was anointing god's spirit was present and i could have we, the church could have prayed for your deliverance and there, there were a lot of pastors there. We could have joined our heads together and asked for the Spirit of God to give us counsel on how to move in this situation. Now I can't do anything. All I can do is give you this kind of specific advice. 
And it was difficult for her to take the advice I gave her. But uh, with her continuous prayer to God for deliverance, God gave her a job to do as a home care. And so she wouldn't be living in the house because she was saying every night the man will come to him and will pull his tent and say, you have to sleep with me. I'm the one that is paying the rent of this house. But God gave her a home care work and that is how she got delivered. I know these are difficult situations. If you have questions on answers, you can write to me or you can talk to me. But I have come with a spiritual truth to tell you that God built home, the devil destroys home. God builds home when he's the head of the house and he cannot protect your house when he is not because he's not rebellious, he's not an unlawful God. He works according to laws, principles and if you are his he says you'll be my god i'll be your people i will protect you i'll watch over them for good now i'm saying god becomes the lord of your house not only when you go to have a church wedding but when you and your house are committed and have declared him to be your lord and your savior and actively continuously have communion with him then he watches over the house by causing you to watch over the house by making you prayerful by making you a watcher of your home. Because when the enemy came to the first home in the book of Genesis, none of them were watchers. The husband had left the home. She had left her position. It means he had left his job as a watcher of the home. The wife that was in the home was also left without weapons because she was ignorant of the word of God. And she couldn't fight the devil when the devil came and boost and knocked against her home. So both husband and wife and children are all responsible, but the main responsibility is upon the husband and their wife to be vigilant, as First Peter 5, 8 tells us. For the enemy walks like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. And this prophecy that came to Jeremiah is the same that the Lord is giving to you and to me. To pull down, to destroy what God has not built, to disagree with what other God has not agreed for you and I and for our families. See this day, God has made you a watcher of your home to root out and pull down, to destroy and throw down, to build and to plant. Now, I don't care how your foundations have been broken, I'm sorry. It's a little, it looks a little hard like to say, I don't care. And maybe I should say, ah. Uh, I, I am sorry for whatever foundation that has been broken, but the Lord is offering you opportunity today to pick up the old pieces. He's giving you opportunity tools. He's offering you another man to marry. He's offering you another opportunity to have a child. He's offering you another opportunity to start your education. He's giving you another opportunity to begin a new therapy. It will end well. It will end in praise. For it is the enemy that came to sow when there was a broken wall. The book of Ecclesiastes tells us that a woman that is cheap is like a broken wall. So we understand that Satan was able to enter the home because Eve was cheap when the enemy entered and bit them this will not be your portion may the lord watch over you for good shall we pray there is power in the name of jesus to break every chain shall we pray break every chain break every chain break every chain in the name of jesus Kirinti limfrim pruntan to rebriante. Olegorian to veduante. Say after me, in the name of Jesus, I am a rebuilder of old rooms. I am a rebuilder of broken walls. I am a rebuilder of broken foundations. I am a restorer of home and not a, broke, a broker of homes, a breaker of homes. Today I stand on the word of God. Whatever seed, whatever thorn the enemy has come to sow, whatever weed the enemy has come to sow in my foundation, in my home, I disagree. I root it out. I root it out. 
I pull it down. I destroy. I throw down any philosophy, any consciousness, any spirit, any foundation, any blood system, any scheme, any strategy, any word spoken over my family for its destruction. In the name of Jesus, I tear down. I pull down. I tear down. I pull down. I tear down. I pull down. I tear down. I tear down. The that the enemy has sown in the lives of my children. I pull it down. I pull it down. I pull it down. I destroy. I throw down. Destroy. I throw down. I destroy. I throw down. I destroy. I throw down. In the name of Jesus, the wheat that the enemy has sown among the wheat of my children will not prevail. The wheat of my life will not grow with tongues, will not grow with wheat. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I raise up a wall of protection over my home by the superior blood of Jesus. I invoke the blood of Jesus over my home. I invoke the blood of Jesus over my husband. I invoke the blood of Jesus over my children. There is power in the name of Jesus. By the power that is in the name of Jesus. By the power that is in the blood of Jesus. By the supremacy of the exaltation of the risen Christ. I exalt him above every destruction of the enemy. Above every curse spoken upon my home. Above every power that has risen. Above the power of Christ on my home. I come against sicknesses. I come against generational shame. I come against generational curses. I come against generational sicknesses that passes on from mother to daughter, from father to son. I curse it. I break it. It will not stand. It will not stand. Any generational curse that the enemy has passed on to my daughter, my son, I break it. I curse it. I break it. I curse it. In the mighty name of Jesus. Let the change break. Let the chains break. Let the chains break in the name of Jesus. Let the chains break. Garote lo bado wa haya de. Ronte kodi antole frubando. Kora bada bata la bade. Clap your hands and pray with me. Say I I pull. I pull down. My children will not walk in the distortion of my fathers. My brothers will not walk in the distortion of my fathers. I stand as a repairer of broken walls. Let every brokenness in my family be rebuilt. Let every damage that has been caused by me, by my husband, by the enemy, to destroy my home, let it not have effect. Let it not have effect. Let it not have effect. Ah, Lord God. Ah, Lord God. You say that you have raised me as a builder of home, as a builder of my home. Not a breaker of my home. Now as I invoke your name, any enemy that came to steal, your word says, your angels will gather the tongue and they will bundle it and burn it. Every tongue that has been sown this night in my family, let the angels of the Lord gather, bundle, burn, gather, bundle, burn, gather, bundle, burn. Every wheat that was sown this night in my family, against my life, against my husband, against my children, gather, bundle, burn. Gather, bundle, bear, gather, bundle, bear, gather, bundle, bear, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, Zalogero Gato Yabade, gather, bundle, bear, gather, bundle, bear, let the yoke break, let the yoke break. Any cord that joins me to evil from my mother's bloodline, you are saying after me, please. Whatever I say, say after me. Let the cord, any umbilical cord. <coughs> The Bible says in Ezekiel chapter 16, when you were born, your suffering and your struggle is, struggle is because when you were born, your umbilical cord was not cut. And therefore you pray with me. Lord God, by the scissors of heaven, cut every umbilical cord that was connected to me at birth, that is provoking struggles in my life. Let it tear. Let it catch fire. Let it catch fire. Let it catch fire. Let it catch fire. In the name of Jesus. Our main prayer is that we have been called to root out, to pull down, to destroy. When no West destiny was being harassed, God had to pull down. God had to destroy and carry away the evil one with the flaws. 
and God gave Noah another opportunity and he messed up again becoming a drunkard and God gave him another opportunity. God is the restorer of hope and he keeps on giving us opportunity upon opportunity. Therefore by his name we pull down, we pull down, we root out, we destroy, let the wicked and his wickedness be carried away by the floor and we plant by the blood of Jesus a house of priests and kings, a house our children will be named across the bodies. We are, we are a house of healthy people. We are a house of intellectuals. We are a royal priesthood, a holy nation. All our sons will be taught by the Lord and grace will be their peace. We will not suffer for trouble. We will not give birth for trouble. It is written the seed of the righteous will prosper. Our children will prosper in the mighty name of Jesus. Be blessed. See you same time next week. I've taken one and a half hours of your time. But it is worth it because we have to start all over again and tear the deception that where we are is we are finished it is ended with us it is not ended with us god gives opportunity over and over again and today he's giving you opportunity to be a rebuilder of your own home pick up the bricks and the pieces and start all over again it is well Amen. Amen. Shalom. This is Apostle Diana. Please share the tape and let others be blessed with it. I'll be back next week, Monday, at the same time, 11 o'clock. Shalom. Shalom. Amen. Amen. Amen.